So Alex, it's what we're talking about then coming down to some basic rules of communication and thinking about attention to detail. I guess so, yeah, simple as that really. It's a tough one because, like you were saying about, you know, put loads of content on your site and that makes people come back. And then there's the argument of like, keep it. It's just striking that balance, isn't it really? And, you know, having that communication with the fans is really important. You know, we work on, um, we use Twitter with some of our bands quite a lot. And some bands tweet, I, I did the first album for Dan the Sacker Scribus Pip, so I've worked with those guys before. And, and Pip tweets all the time and it's great. And mm -hmm. people speak back to him and he replies to almost everybody. But then I'm also working on like the, the new Miles Kane record. Miles was in the last Shadow Puppets with Alex Turner. So he's coming off the back of a number one album. He's kind of a big name, you know, but it's, it's a very conscious decision not, not to tweet from Miles because it's just not what he's about as a person. It's not, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't want people to know what he's doing necessarily. He want the, and also the management and the kind of idea is to keep that mystique a little bit about exactly what's happening with the campaign. And, and when a new single does come along, the first time you hear about it is maybe on anime.com as opposed to it's been tweeted six weeks previous and it's not that exciting anymore, you know. Because you, I think the thing with this as well is it's like, you, you want rock stars still. Absolutely. So it's like, you know, for, 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 I mean, it's all about like what suits you and your music, but I sort of, as a journalist and as someone who's got, sort of, he's very romantic about rock and roll, like I sort of still want stars and I still want, you know, David Bowie's and, you know, people who I sort of don't know everything about their lives and don't want to know the minute eye of their day-to-day -day existence on Twitter and stuff. But me and Karen were really obsessed with this I am, am I, who am I, this big viral campaign. It's, it's gone rubbish, though. Well, I was going to say that, I see, yeah. but... Like, it was these series of videos that just sort of kept turning up and it was sort of of this, this woman sort of with mud on her face in this log cabin and, like, well, this weird kind of, like, phallic imagery and it had strawberries. Weird clues hidden in it and everything was in <coughs> numbers and everybody, it was cleverly done and the reason I say it went rubbish is because it's like this no-name Swedish artist who revealed who she was and the songs are all a bit crap. So nobody actually <laughs> started, cared after about the seventh video. But the first, if you look online, But can you imagine like, if you did that and the song wasn't crap? Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but everybody was, everybody in the world who was following it thought it was Christina Aguilera's comeback. And there was like, it was like, MT, they sent stuff to MTV and MTV did, they sent a lock of blonde hair to MTV, which is really creepy, but... Like with, um, a guy, with a guy on a mask on a motorcycle, but it just yeah, turned up at the door. Like that Zavirax advert, which was a cool song. We were like, we were like betting each other they're like 50 quid and that I'm like but it's golf rap 50 quid is golf and rap. then it was like no because they, they they did things like named the back the YouTube background um, the JPEG of it was named whatever the gold rap album was named so people were like oh it must, it's, de it's definitely gold rap and then they had a a strawberry cake and there was a photo of Christina Aguilera the night before with a t-shirt with a strawberry cake on it but they, it was really really cleverly done they did their research but it's a shame that she was crap yeah, yeah but is that the only reason it went wrong because you think the song everyone was, got really was there was no reveal they no. revealed it by somebody found old pictures on Twitter of the film set and it was like an inflatable pool it was all shot in the f Swedish forest but we were but sat there like going it was in a studio with an inflatable pool we were sat there going like this is like this is Madonna this is a new Madonna this is like going to change everything. It's amazing. But you're right, though, that you get these things. I mean, Woo Life are probably another yeah. example. That's a good example. Every single band in the world right you, now. Have you guys heard, heard of Woo Life? So, Woo Life are kind of. So, they clearly have a. See, that's funny. <laughs> no one, no one, yeah. yeah, I mean, they're, you know, they're, but they're, they're kind of an interesting bunch because what I know of them, which are, you know, uh, yeah, uh, the, you know, they've, they've posted some really strange videos on their site. They sort of position themselves as a bit of a collective. And I have it on quite good authority that when they were taken into a recording studio recently, they saw a mixing desk and asked what it was because they've never recorded using multi-track. Um, I had no idea. So anyway, they're, you know, but they're they're deliberately just shunning everything. They're completely obtuse. They're, they're you know entirely plotting their own path, and the hype around that band is a critical mass. Well, in in London though, and in the industry. Every single, Maybe. every single oddball band, and I say oddball is in like not really super accessible pop or indie rock that comes in to meet us, quotes that band as we want to be a bit like them. And the problem with that, I mean, we'll life are managed by an advertising company. Yeah. But I do think, <laughs> I do think the band are genuinely odd. I don't think the, I think the advertising company has channeled them a bit. No, but the problem yeah. with Wool Life, is, I'm, I'm not being funny, but the reason why we're in Newcastle and no one's heard about Woo Life. It's because they're nothing. It's yeah. sort of because they don't have any tunes. Yeah. 
but they're also as, not a, as, as a model for sort of how to present yourself and get people talking about you. And uh, when I say people, I mean like industry, industry people. Yeah. Mm. Like they're fascinating and that they just don't have any tunes. Mm. But I'm not like the sort of us suggesting that that's a method to get people to be interested in you. I think it's perfectly valid. It's just that yeah, they do have a song that's a truck backing up for eight minutes. <laughs> yeah, I'm not joking. That's, that's my favourite.